Today I'm going to give you a, a, just an overall view of R Romexis and how I use it. Um, so I'm in the office uh, during the day, so I may get some interruptions, but that's okay. Um, so the two views that you're going to use typically are going to be Explorer view and Implant view. I don't use Panoramic that much because you can get that view. Okay, got interrupted there for just a second. So we use Explorer view and Implant view. Uh, those are going to be the main two. In the Explorer view, typically I'll use it when I'm looking at a specific problem. Like in this situation, we're looking at the lower right, uh, lower right molar number 30. That's the problem in this case. I'm going to run you through the menus. Of all the things on the right side, you can certainly go through and, and look at each one. Uh, but when we're getting ready, just a typical view, we're going to have, uh, let's see, usually the labels will pop up here. Let's see if they will. Well. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you got your toggle zoom mode. T typically, uh, we'll keep this on for looking for a problem. You got your move, rotate, volume. Leave that highlighted, and then you want to show your annotation. So basically, if you click deselect that, it would take away any implants you have planned um, or anything like that. I don't use these others as much. Um, let's see. I don't use these much. Under annotation, measuring, we use that a good bit. So if you were going to measure a tooth before a root canal treatment, that's helpful in giving you a, you know, an idea of how long the tooth is. If we want to delete that, we just shrink these menus with the little triangles. Highlight, that's, that would be select all, but there's only one, so we'll use that. Okay, we'll expand the menus. I don't use much, I don't measure angles that much. I don't add text that often or draw. Uh, either. So of these under 3D rendering, uh, let's see, on, let's see, what is this, let's check out this title, cutoff threshold. So basically this is like how much will be, how much information will be included. So like if you go all the way up, you can see the face. That's not what we're interested in. So I just slide it until the scan looks pretty clean, but we have most of the bone present. I don't really use these others too much. Um, these three views are good. You can show your sagittal plane. That just helps visualize. And that can be helpful for the team members or patients because as you slide these views, oh, let's see, as you slide these views, they'll, they'll move. It'll show you where your plane is actually making the slice. So those are mostly for helping, um, helping other people who are watching you or if you're trying to explain this something to someone um, particularly to a patient that they would be able to understand better by seeing those slices so in this situation uh, next well next I'm going to show you how I would how I would evaluate uh, what's going on here at tooth number 30 all right we're had a little break there I'm going to continue along uh, so we are going to look at this, on, in this case, tooth number 30 on the lower on the lower right, obviously. So I'm going to go into the axial view, hold my left mouse. Oh, I, had a, I was still in measuring. So we're going to go over here and delete that. We're going to go back and select move, rotate volume. On the lower left, the axial view here, I'm going to hold the left mouse button. Drag the scan over. Now I'm going to hold the right mouse button and rotate. And I try to get the sagittal plane going straight mesial distal and the coronal plane going straight buccal lingual. Now on the coronal view, I'm going to slide it up until the axial view is touching the top of the crown. And on that sagittal view, I'm going to hold the right mouse button, rotate it like this. And then I'm going to come back to the axial view, rotate again. So I like for this, the axial view to look like a target going down the middle of the tooth, and then the same, and then the sagittal view to be straight through the roots, and the same thing uh, for the. Excuse me, I'd like the sagittal view to be. Pardon me. I like the sagittal view when I'm looking at the coronal view. The sagittal view to be straight down the roots, and the same thing for the coronal view when I'm looking in the sagittal sagittal view. Now this is a single rooted tooth. 
you know that would be straight down the middle of the uh, canal in this case I've got to move the tooth like if I want to look at the mesial I just grab the sagittal view move move it forward take a look at what we have on those mesial roots and then slide it back to look at the distal roots so to me it's probably it looks like a fractured um, like a fractured root most likely uh, let's see it's always a little hard to tell but we did take this tooth out today and it was pretty busted up and had decay underneath the crown then you can also see decay in the furcation when you look right here so this zooming that's happening this is the mouse wheel taking it in and out okay so now we're gonna look just take a, a look at the implant view so we're gonna select implants now let's say that we were gonna well for one thing we can do we can come in here under panoramic we can select auto fit and then auto focus typically that's gonna give you a nice view um, and then on the lower left you can see these slices so we're gonna click on this wrench viewport settings and then the middle middle one right here we're gonna slide this up to 40 and what that's gonna do is widen you can see on the upper left there what it's doing so we're gonna widen that view to about 40 millimeters all right and now when we scroll around you, on the upper left which would be like a pan view you can see the lines moving and then you can also see that on the upper left um, you can move the um, oh I have to remind myself here blue is axial okay that's right so sometimes I use all these tools and then I don't really think about it as much all right so anyway so the axial line here we can slide this up and down so in this case we're most interested in the lower so I'm just gonna slide it here now the panoramic curve which is this green line here it looks really good um, there are different ways we can adjust that and actually when we change things we have to go back and reselect that we want that to be 40 millimeters wide um, there's different things we can do so for the panoramic curve we can do edit panoramic curve so if we just wanted to bring this in on the upper left like this that would bring your panoramic curve more in line like right here it's coming straight down the middle of the roots of number 30 alternatively if it was all messed up you could select draw panoramic curve you could also delete it um, so for draw panoramic curve we're going to click here and then you just start on the left or right and then you just draw the dots and then once you've drawn them you can do edit like we did before um, so those are some of the tools let's see the measuring these these are similar the panoramic curve yeah those are well auto auto fit focus and then the ones that three I just showed you those are the most common that we use on this menu okay so I will show you like in this case we're not going to place an immediate implant uh, with all that that's going on uh, but let's say we were you just come in here like this um, you can go to and this I mean helps this could help for future planning well I'll show you real quick here I'm gonna slide the slide forward until I can see the canal which is here on the lower left the mental foramen I'm gonna go to draw nerve so we're gonna go just outside the canal or the just outside the foramen click in there and then I slide the uh, on the upper um, right we slide our lines back until the front line is hitting the nerve which would be here and then I just go one two three four all right one two three okay so this is about as far back as we need to take this nerve we don't need to trace it on back so then you come over and you deselect draw nerve so as long as you have it selected so for instance if you're going to trace the left and right you'd want to deselect it and reselect it or when you click on the left mental foramen it would tie your latest your last dot to your newest dot and draw a nerve coming across so you can see that in your um, rendering here we'll slide things over there we go okay so now 
we're going to slide back over to the frication. So one thing you could do, you grab your measuring tool and just say, if you were going to put the implant about where the frication is, measure down to the top of the nerve, which is 14. So in all likelihood, I probably choose a 10 millimeter implant. We're going to go to implant library. For most implants that we use, I will I will select from the Zimmer uh, cat category. If you click show only favorites, Zimmer is the only one we have sent, made as a favorite. We're going to double click, then select tapered screw vent. Probably put like a 5.2 back here, maybe a 4.7. So we're going to select a 4.7 by 10. Add to plan. Now if you're going to add several of those or more than one, you can select set default. We're going to hit add, plan, add to plan, and then we're going to come over, place that. Oh, <laughs> yep, I meant to place it one forward, so we're going to slide that up. Now I'm going to direct it like this. And that's just an approximation of where we would put this implant um, as far as where we're going to go in the future. Probably something like this. But that just will give us an idea. That, again, this will, get, this will be planned when it's time to place the implant, which today we did not do that. We removed the tooth and we placed a socket preservation graft. Um, so all in all, those are the most of the tools that we use. Uh, a lot of times we're using the Explore when we're looking for, for a specific problem. Uh, the implant view gives us an overall view and allows us to scroll through the, uh, through the uh, jaws pretty quickly and, uh, and allows us to you know, plan, plan implants and uh, and evaluate and evaluate the jaws at the same time.